Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Profit Minds podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Stephen Kirch, creator of the Profit Minds Growth System, a unique blend of profit growth, productivity acceleration, and building robust business process for scale. In every episode, I interview entrepreneurs and small business owners from around the world with a unique story to tell. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Well, hi, everyone. Today, my guest is Joe Palo, CEO and founder of Sell Nothing. And today we're going to be talking about leadership and onboarding. So welcome back, Joe. Good to be here. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I always start with the the story, but but you've been on before, so people know your story. Well, and if they haven't heard it, they need to go back and watch that episode because it was really, really good. Thanks. But um, today we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the earning framework that you have and how it applies to some other things. So, so Joe, tell us the story of how you came up with this earning framework that you use in, in your sell nothing system. Um, it probably started, I'm almost sure it started years ago when I was selling books door to door and I've been in sales my entire life and it just, kind of evolved little bits and pieces and finally I, I put it together. But the biggest thing is sales, ha I have to get them talking and I have their certain questions. My questions in sales, I should be, my talking in sales should be just questions. And it's just little bits and pieces were developed into a system and it's very transferable. I mean, it works in sales, but it also works in leadership, uh, working in new clients. Um, there's a lot of transferability with the earning process. So, so why don't you go through the E A R N I N G, the earning sure. Sure. acronym there? For uh, us. It, it started like, we, well, we have these plans, like a battle plan. The night before you have your plans, you're all organized. You think it's going to work. The battle starts, you take the plan, throw it out the windows. Yeah, exactly. Sales, sales calls are exactly the same way. <laughs> so this was a way to kind of circumvent that and give us kind of a roadmap of things we want to do. Should they go in this order? It'd be nice, but they never do. Do you need every step? It'd be nice, but you probably don't. So it just gives us the background and it can mesh in with any other existing sales talks. And a lot of pieces I think we are doing already. Um, the E, just stand, each letter stands for a topic I need to a touch on or address. The E is just, I need to evaluate their current reality. That's my data gather. I need to ask enough questions. I mean, I look at it, if I'm selling a similar product or service, I have to ask enough questions so, or at apples and oranges, I have to ask them questions so I know type of apples. If it's a similar service, apples, apples, I need to know what type of apples you have. If it's something different, apples or oranges, I still need to ask enough questions to know what type of apples you're doing. So that's E, evaluate their current reality. And I think we do a pretty good job on that part. Um, a is a little bit different and I get pushback is where I ask, what are the advantages of what you're doing right now? What's going good? What do you like? And I get people saying, Joe, I don't want to do that. That's, no, but there right. has to be a reason that they're buying what they're currently buying. Bingo. Yeah, it, it, it's there's there's three reasons. Um, first, I like asking what do you like about it because no one else does that. I get different results. My clients get different results because we do things different. Second, if you're asking what do they like about their current vendor, that screams confidence. Business is given to confident people. And the biggest reason is what you were touching on by me asking what do you currently what do you, your current vendor what do you like about them. You're telling me your hot buttons. That is literally what I, in five minutes or five weeks or five months when I got to close, I got to have some of that. And I'm not going to know until I ask, what are the advantages? So that's the E and the A. R is revise. What do you want to change? This is the major reason why we're going to go forward, but I don't want to lead off with it. Um, this is where we start really figuring out what do they need to fix? Because we want to fix that problem. Well, tell us about that piece. Yeah, um, I mean, that's a, that's a natural flow on from... Well, we, we, we know what we, what we like about it. Well, what do you not like? Correct. Correct. And we target right that into that piece. Um, so it's E A R N. No, who can say no to this? Who else needs to be involved in the decision-making process? There are some times I will back out of a presentation if I don't have those key players there. Sometimes you can't, 
or maybe I won't give the price or whatever, but I really want to have all those people there. And I realize you can't do that all the time, but I want to be aware, at least know who they are. Um, the I is really important. Interpret back what they just said. I would just say, so even just for clarity, can I take a few minutes? I'd like to repeat back what I said. It's kind of a command statement. I don't really wait for an answer. And then I just go back through the E, the earning, what are the advantages, what do they want to change, and who else needs to be involved? That is a key piece because biggest complaint in sales is no one listens to me. And it makes you listen to them. But literally, you'll hear things like, hello, you said it better than I did. I, I'm not even, I haven't even started selling. What a great spot to be in. And mentally, I'm on their side of the table. They're this like this guy gets me. So that's a really big piece. Interpret back what they just said. So you actually go through the the the, the first four E A R N in the interpret piece. It's not just what they most recently said, but it's it goes right back thing. to the beginning. Correct. Correct. Um, and then out then then I go the second end, nothing. What if nothing changes? And I got to ask that because that gets a sense of urgency. Um, and odds are you're going to get a fluff answer. It's just, oh, I don't know. We'll probably be about the same. I'm going to push back. I, that's the pain. Well, tell me more about that. When you say you're going to be the same, well, give me an example. What else? I really want them giving me an answer on that question. And it's a little bit uncomfortable, but I need that uncomfort because that's going to help them go forward. And then, gee, what is the gain? What is the pay value? If we fix this problem, what would you do? If you took this problem off your plate and cleared up two hours, what would you do with that time? Now I can start showing my product or selling what I do. I don't want to do anything else till I go through this process. Again, it does not have to go in that order, but it's very transferable. It, it, it You can skip around and go through it. Sometimes you may not need to have every step, but I really want to make sure I, I touch on it and just think through each one of those thought pieces. That, that, yeah, I, I, I love the framework and, and, and I've been I've been reading the book. I'll do a little plug here for you. Oh, thank I like it. Thank you. Appreciate it's, it. It's it's. I, I'm not quite through. I'm in the, like the last chapter, so but but um, really appreciate that. I uh, really appreciate the in, insight and the stories that you tell there, and and the way you, you continue to repeat things because you say it in several different ways, several different times, and 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 it's starting to stick now. Good. Uh, so, Agreed. so, so talk to us, talk to us about how this applies to something else. You said leadership. How, okay. how does earning apply in, in leadership? Uh, there's two thoughts. If, and I believe if this principle works and it's the right way to sell people, um, cause if they're saying all these things, my conviction, they really need it. That's the right way to work with people. And I believe if this principle or, uh, thought process works over here, I can take it over here. Well, that's what I do with leadership. That what we should really do with our people that follow us, we bring them on, or even clients, we should treat them the same. So this earning process can be applied to leadership. Uh, actually, my, uh, I'm, we'll be writing another book. I'm probably gonna take the principles of how to sell nothing and take out the word sales and put the word lead because it works. It's the right way to work with this. This earning process could be a great one-on-one -on -one weekly meeting. You know, evaluate your current reality. What, what's going on with the person? Let's have a rookie across the table from me. Hey, what's going on? Get there, all those information out. Hey, what's going good? That's a good question. What do you like to change? That's a great question for them. Hey, if you don't do anything different, what's going to happen? Or, you know, he's in charge of it, so you skip that one with the no. Um, and repeat back what they just said. And then say, okay, well, just curious, what if nothing changes? And I make them through. So this earning process, you can pick it up, and it's a great outline for every one-on-one -on -one meeting. That make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, it's different from the place that I thought you were going to go with earning and leadership because there's a certain amount of being a leader of an organization, which is a selling process, right? So, so I can imagine doing the same thing with your team, not just the one on one, but if you're trying to get your team to go in a different direction. Absolutely. I could I could see this same sort of, well, let's evaluate the current reality. Yep. Right? It would be the same thing too. Uh, and I firmly believe in this and I coach on this. Whoever is talking is buying. In a selling situation, if I am talking more than you are, I'm literally buying your objections. Well, if it's true over here, wouldn't that be true with leading? It's the same principle. So if I'm in a one-on-one -on -one or if I'm coaching my job is I have to get them to talk. And these questions are, again, just the great foundation. You can take where you want, but it's it's a process. 
and even let them know, hey, when we talk, we're going to go through this process. Teach them the process. It's very, I'm very transparent. Yeah, that's that. I I, I love that. You know, and and you can do the same thing. I'm coaching my daughter who's trying to find uh, a, a, her next gig. Right. Mm -hmm. Use the same framework when you're selling yourself as a potential employee. Absolutely. Right. You it, want to find out what problem you're solving for the person who's hiring you. Absolutely. Uh, and, and what do they like about it? what did the person, what your last job, what did you, let's say if it's a recruiting situation, what did you like about your, because back my mind, we got to have some of that too. It's very transferable. And it, it kind of leads right into when we have that initial conversation with people or even with new clients. Um, I like to follow this up with, I guess I'd call it uh, the expectations. When we first engage with somebody, whether it be a client or a new employee or uh, even on your team, having that clarity of expectations, that's pretty important, I think. Oh, it's, it's, it's crucial. So, so let's, let's talk about that onboarding. Um, in fact, you know, the most recent podcast that I just did, not with you, but with, with another, you know, another guest was about hiring. Right. We didn't get to the onboarding piece, but but how would you use this in a, in an onboarding situation with a new employee? Um, this started. I've, I've been fortunate my whole career. I've really had good retention, uh, been blessed. But I've also really realized when I'm working and bringing someone on, it is a sale, and in sales, we want to answer objections in advance. You all heard that; it's a little cliche, and that's true. That apply that to onboarding. I would simply say, if I was talking to you, I'd say, hey, Stephen, you know, we're just, get, let's assume you're just coming to work with me. All right. And so at first conversation, let's even assume it's before COVID and we're in a conference room. And, uh, well, you know, <laughs> back in the old days, we used to do Back that. in the old days, we right. used to do this face to face instead right, right. of everything on Zoom. Yes. Right. So <laughs> I would say, hey, just, you know, I realize you're coming on board. Uh, if it's all right with you, is I just want to talk through some things you can count on me to do. Just some expectations. Is that all right? You yeah, say, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Course. Uh, and it may be somewhat there assumptive, but just to make sure we're on the same page. The first thing you count on me to do is I'll do what I say I'm going to do. Um, let me do a sidebar too, because I'm going to kind of roll in the role play. I don't want to just go through and read these out to people. I have to tell a story or make it come alive. So I'm going to go do both right now, but I want to make sure I didn't miss that piece. We don't want to just read through the expectations. We got to give examples or really make sure they understand it because that's what we want to flip this over in a minute. So if I'll say uh, first expectation, you can count on me to do what I say I'm going to do. If I tell you, you're going to get an email in 48 hours of us having a call. You're going to get an email in 40. I'm just wired that way. So that's good expectation. Second, I, said, I know the role you're coming into. I know we have high highs and low lows. When bad things happen, you know, we'll talk about it, but I'm not going to dwell on it. In other words, you can count on I'll always be of a positive attitude. You can always come to me and I'll have a positive attitude. Third, it's a big one, at least in my mind. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do or I've done before. And then I'd bounce that back and I'll actually do it. Steve, why would that be important? I actually have the person across the table from me tell me why is that important. And if I were to ask you that question, Steve, if I'm, I'm going to promise I'm not going to do anything that I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do or have done before, why would that be important? What would your answer be? What would you say? Well, for, for, for me as, as an employee, knowing that, that you're willing to roll up your sleeves, that you've done this before, knowing that it's, it's possible to do it, right? That gives me a great deal of confidence of, you know, you're not going to, you're not just going to throw stuff over the wall at me and expect me to, you know, just completely figure it out. And I'm never going to be floundering. I'm, I'm always going to have, I have somebody I can go to if I, if I struggle with that. Right. I, I can, I can say, you know, Hey Joe, I, I'm, 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 I'm having trouble here. I know you've done this before. Can you, can you give me a little guidance? You know, I thought about trying this way or this way. What do you think is the right way to do this? What's your experience tell you? So I know, I know there's somebody who has, done this before. So I know it's doable. Um, and somebody who can help me if I get, if I get stuck. Yeah. Uh, two things. Uh, remember I said, whoever's talking is buying. Imagine that conversation. I'm getting you talking by asking that question. Yeah. You know, and, and I really want to hear that. They're telling me 
how to how to how to how they want to be worked with. And if they don't give me enough, I'll say, well, what else? I will push them until I get an answer on that piece. Um, so then I'll, that and I say that's a big thing. I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do or I've done before. The third one is, I know this happens several times in our career. Sometimes in rookies, sometimes when we're really experienced, or sometimes even when we're more seasons and tenured, we lose belief in ourselves. It's kind of random. It's going to happen a couple times in our lives. Um, sometimes you need someone just a little bit outside to be an anchor to pull you back. So you can count on me that I'll believe in you, provided you have what I call, you know, the fast goals, goals that are frequently discussed. They're ambitious, they're specific, and they're transparent. And our next part is we really want to make sure we're clear on those goals. So those are all things you can count on me to do. Now, if it's all right, I'd like to flip it over and say, these are some things I'd like to be able to count on you to do. And it's pretty much just the inverse. Uh, I'd like to be able to count on that you'll do what you say you're going to do. On our coaching calls, we're going to have action items. Uh, when you say they're done, in my mind, they're done. And not just saying it'll happen here, but I had a guy out east that I was working a couple years ago. He wasn't doing his action items. He's making a million bucks a year. And on our calls, I said, wait a minute, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm actually going to do something else. I actually took our coaching time for him to do his action items. I said, Palo, you're making me mad, but that's what I need. So that's an example of me reciprocating back, but I also gave them a good story because that's an objection. Does that make it sense? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, for second expectation, uh, we have to have some form of tracking. I don't care what it is. There's a hundred ways to get across town, but you and I need a speedometer so we know if you're having a good week or a bad week. I don't care what it is. We'll figure that out later, but we have to have some sort of tracking of activity just so we're on the same page. Is that fair enough? Sure. Um, next, I'd um, like to be able to count on you to be open-minded, be coachable, not too worried about that. And then the last one is when we have a meeting, let's strive to give each other a 24-hour notice. Something pops up. Let's set up a reoccurring time and let's make sure we have that. Is that all right? Uh, it absolutely makes sense. Okay. Now, let's stop here. That is a very valuable conversation to have those pieces back and forth. Um, oh, I guess absolutely. I, I would add one more thing. Uh, I'll say, is there anything that you'd like to add to this? because it is a two-way conversation. And sometimes you have some really good ideas. But that is a valuable conversation. But I used to think of it, that value will stay back in that conference room. I needed something to bring it forward every day so I can hold them accountable. So it came up with, that's the expectation talk. It's valuable, but the value is multiplied by 10 when you ask the critical question. The critical question is, Steve, hypothetically, it may be five days from now, maybe five months, maybe five years from now. What should I say or what should I do if you're not doing something you said you were going to do? And just be quiet. What should I do or what should I say if you're not doing something you said you were going to do? And if they may give you some fluff. I'm going to say what else. But you're going to hear things like, yeah, kick me in the rear. Let me know. And I let them talk and I say, so if I hear you right, you're giving me permission to hold you accountable. That's critically important. We need their permission. And I'll say, you know, it's a carrot and a stick. Uh, I'm not really a stick guy, but I will say, you know, if you want me to hold you accountable, I'm just going to remind you of what you want and why you want it. Or I'll look at it. You can say your goals are up here. Your activity is down here. Which one do you want to change? And this is a critical piece when I'm bringing on clients that really puts you in a good spot to have that relationship going forward. It allows me two months from now to say, hey, remember, Steve, when we were having that conversation in, in the conference room when you first started, we talked about expectations, and you'll say, yeah. And then what did I ask you afterwards? And I don't remember. Well, I asked you, what should I do or what should I say if you're not doing something you said you were going to do? What did you tell me? You told me to kick me in the rear. Okay, I'm kicking you in the rear. They can't even get mad at me because it's their words. I'm just doing what they wanted me to do. It takes all the pressure off of me. So two separate thoughts in sales and in the leadership and onboarding, but a lot of overlap with those two. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 um, whether it's onboarding a client or onboarding an employee, um, both, both the same, because, you know, again, you can set out, here's what you can count on me for. I'd like they count on you for these things yep. and you know, what, what's the mechanism, what's the trigger, what's the, you know, what should I do if you're not living up to this agreement? I would add to it, it may be a little bit of an awkward conversation. You have to couch it the right way. 
but this would be a good conversation with your existing clients. We really want to have retention. We've already worked with them. Say, hey, we're, I'm doing little working things a little bit different this year. Can I bounce some ideas off you? And go ahead and review it. They've already got it. But what I really want is I want that retention because our existing clients are going to go away. Well, let's try to prevent it by going through the, the uh, expectation talk and then the critical question. And again, these are just tailored. They're kind of very transferable. Uh, mm -hmm. I have my clients actually tailored to what you need. You may need a couple other pieces down there. Have at it. Go ahead. This is just yeah. kind of the bare minimum, um, but it really does help with your retention. Yeah, oh, I can. I, I can. I can see how that would work. Um, yeah. So, so what are the what are the biggest ways that you find? Um, we're talking about client retention. What, you know, and, and, and I'm sure you see this with your clients too, you're coaching, you know, you're, cause you're coaching people on how to do sales. What do you see that that's the biggest challenge for them in terms of retention of clients? What's your biggest challenge? Retention of them, of their biggest clients. Um, I think, and I'm not going to get into generations and how every generation thinks different because that's happened since the beginning of time. Um, but I think it really comes down to, it's gonna be very simple. It's the relationship you have. It's the relationship that, you know, like the people can come to me, they can ask me questions. Um, I use the old example. It's an emotional checking account that I need to make enough deposits in my coaches, clients, my team members that I'm going to have to make a withdrawal. I have to enough in, have enough in there to cover the balance. So I really do put them focused. And if they're working on retention, it's letting that person across the table from them saying, all right, he's got my back. He's going to help me. He knows about my family. He knows about me. He knows not only what I want, but he knows why I want it. Those are big pieces. And that's when I work with anybody. One of the things we do as far as retention, I have them create a vision board. It's a piece of cork with a frame around it and pictures. And I have my clients do that with their team because them talking about what they want and why they want it. Now they see me as a vehicle to help them get that. That's some pretty good retention. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, what, what's the biggest, so I'm, I'm going to sort of flip this around. Sure. What's the biggest mistake that, that you see made in, in that sort of onboarding or, 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 or uh, you know, the, or the leadership thing, what, where, where's, where's what you see is the biggest gap um, that people don't do that they really need to do outside of this expectation thing, yeah. which I think is, is really powerful. Um, I think that when newer, let's just use newer people coming on, they're good people. They want to help. They want to do the work. They just don't know. And I don't really know if we really carve out the time at the initial part to really give them something they need to do that they, at the end of the day, they check the box, some activity, and then hold them accountable to that piece because we're setting expectations. Um, it, it used to be uh, years ago, I was a different job. I had a new, newer person coming on board, uh, went through the hiring process. And I said, all right, here's our sales talk. Just curious, how long would it take you to memorize it? It's like four pages. Wasn't that long? Uh, I have it done by Monday. You're sure. Yep. And it's like on a Wednesday. I said, all right, Next day, how you doing on that thing? Checked on them. Okay, we're working on it. Monday rolled along. And I said, uh, let's see here to go ahead and give me your sales talk. And he didn't have it done. I said, all right, why don't you grab your stuff and go ahead and go home and come back when it's memorized. Hmm. And because if I let that slip, and that's to answer your question, we don't hold them accountable. They don't know what they need to do. And we let them know, hey, I'm serious with this. And I wasn't angry with them, but boy, it was memorized the next day. <laughs> All of a sudden, he yeah. realized how important it was to live up to what you said you were going to do. And by me letting it slide, what message did I tell him? Oh, it's not that important. Yeah. So to answer your question, I think that would be one of the biggest things is have that consistent expectation of whatever they're going to do and follow up with it and make sure you know. Um, even with my coaching guys talked about uh, vision boards, when they create one. I have them take a picture and send it to me because we take out on our next call. They'll walk me through not only what they want, but why they want it. That's a lot of accountability, but I'm showing them that's important. 
And it's actually important for me to hear what they want and why they want it because in terms of their goals, because it makes a difference on how I'm going to coach them. Sure. But it's important for them to know what they want and hear themselves say why they want it because it gives them clarity of their vision. And, and clarity of your vision is directly proportional to your endurance, how hard you're going to work. I want to hear that right there. Yeah. And again, that comes back to the retention piece that helps that helps get them tied to me. I don't want people tied to a company. They can leave a company, but people don't leave Joe Palo. That's my goal. That's great. So as, as we're wrapping up here, let's just make sure people know how to get in touch with you um, if they want. And I know you have a, you have a download uh, yep. for folks on this earning framework. Yep. Uh, yes. The best thing is just go to my website, sellnothing.co. I could not afford the M. So it's not .com. It's .co. A, a Bitcoin company bought it. They want like 15 grand for an M. So uh, sellnothing.co. And on there, you can find a way to get to the book, how to sell nothing. Uh, the convert sales faster. That's a free PDF uh, that's on there. And then if you want to uh, read more about me, you can see some other podcasts I've been on. Um, it's just going to go to uh, sellnothing.co and then everything should be on there. Great. Thanks. And that concludes our show. Uh, thanks again to my guest, Joe Palo, the CEO and founder of Sell Nothing. And I hope you learned something about leadership and onboarding. I know I did. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Profit Minds podcast. This is your host, Dr. Stephen Kirch. Please visit www.profitminds.net for other episodes or to contact me. Thank you for your positive feedback, comments, questions, and for sharing this show with others. Thanks for listening. Have a grateful day.